T-Tube, News Today Headlines. Tigray government says international community has let it down accreditation. World Bank grants Ethiopia $300 million for Tigray war recovery. Felmore restaurant owner calls on Bay Area restaurants to raise money for Ethiopian war refugees. Tigray government says international community has let it down accreditation. Rights groups accuse Ethiopian regional forces of ethnic cleansing in Tigray. Two leading human rights groups on Wednesday accused armed forces from Ethiopia's Amhara region of waging a campaign of ethnic cleansing against ethnic Tigrayans during a war that has killed thousands of civilians and displaced more. The government of Tigray, in an open letter to United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, said it was more than willing to see a peaceful end to the conflict in Ethiopia, but if peace was not on the table, then it could resort to other means. It was frustrated that, since the mini-truce announced more than three weeks ago, not much headway in providing humanitarian aid had been made. It also believed that the international community was not really treating the Tigray issue like it did with conflicts elsewhere. The government said, there has been enough death and destruction. However absent a credible process to bring about peace, we cannot continue to watch our citizens perish from hunger and easily preventable diseases. Accordingly, if peaceful options are no longer possible, we will be forced to resort to other means to break the devastating blockade that has made Tigray hell on earth. Guterres early this week noted the slow pace of aid trickling into Tigray, estimating that it was slightly above 4% of what's required. Like the late Jonas Savambi during Angola's civil war, the Ethiopian government had employed a scorched-earth policy, devastating towns, facilities, agriculture, transport routes, and general infrastructure to deprive the advancing enemy forces or the belligerent population of food, shelter, fuel, communications, and other necessities for survival. Reed, WHO chief says crises in Ethiopia and other places deserve as much attention as Ukraine cattle had been looted, and seeds and fertilizer burnt as such farmers would fail to plant this coming season further pushing Tigray into deeper hunger and poverty that could last for a generation. Under international law, it's a war crime to intentionally block humanitarian aid to use starvation and civilian suffering as part of strategy. The transitional government of Tigray noted that for months now communication and banking services had been cut, further pushing communities into poverty. It said, exacerbating this colossal humanitarian crisis is the suspension of essential social and economic services. Total electricity and communication blackout, the shortage of basic commodities, and the suspension of banking and transportation services have wreaked havoc on Tigray. With suffering continuing, the transitional government said the mini-truce, instead of addressing its intended goals, had scored brownie points for the Ethiopian government. The international community has chosen to praise the regime despite allowing only a mere 6% of the aid needed into Tigray. Thus, emboldened, the authorities continue to make empty promises, the transitional authority said. Various media and scholars had questioned whether there was a racial bias in the way the world had responded to the war in Ukraine and the crisis in Tigray. With that in mind, the transitional authority in Tigray felt let down. Also read, Tigrayans don't die easily, Shoot Agaran, survivor of ethnic cleansing narrates ordeal, yet we are disappointed that the international response to the unfolding tragedy in Tigray has not been infused with a fraction of the urgency with which the international community has acted in addressing humanitarian crises elsewhere, the government said. Meanwhile, the Associated Press cited a report conducted by regional health officials yet to be made public, saying at least 1,900 children under five had died from malnutrition in Ethiopia's embattled Tigray region in the past year. For the past two years, San Francisco native Mele Menelik has grown accustomed to a harsh reality of life on the North Ethiopian countryside, where it's commonplace to drink river water and dodge bombs, she says. Born and raised in San Francisco's Fillmore district, she moved to her parents' birth country of Ethiopia in summer 2019 to open a second location of their family's Soma restaurant Moya and start a farm. Now, at 34 years old, she says living in Ethiopia has been more challenging than she ever could have imagined. 
between COVID and the launch of a war between Tigrayans and the Ethiopian central government in November 2020, the last few years have been devastating. The day the war started was the day I planted our first plants for the first harvest, Menelik recalls. To help draw attention to the ongoing civil war in Ethiopia, Menelik is calling on Bay Area restaurants to host fundraising events to help victims. Ethiopian restaurants including Blue Nile and Mela Bistro in Oakland have stepped up. In October the owner of Mela Bistro hosted a gala in Sausalito and raised more than $50,000 for victims of the war. Now Menelik says Moya hopes to bring in funds through their restaurant, too. There's a link to help Ukraine everywhere, and I understand that, Menelik says. I feel horrible to even bring that up to justify what I'm saying, but there is just nothing done for Tigray. Menelik's family has deep ties to the restaurant industry in San Francisco. For five years they owned Caferata, a 100-year-old North Beach business on the corner of Columbus and Filbert Avenues that's now known as Piazza Pellegrini. Then in 2009 the family opened Moya in Soma, though a fire had them out of commission for a few years before they reopened in 2012 on 9th and Mission Streets. Menelik's mother Fanna Ailmeyer who is a microbiologist but says she never felt she got a fair shake at the science career she dreamt of, so after launching her successful restaurants in San Francisco, Ailmeyer who traveled to India to learn more about how science applies to food production. Then she set her eyes on starting a farm in Ethiopia, and a restaurant too, which is how Menelik found her way to Tigray, the northernmost regional state in the Ethiopia, just before the war started. Menelik dropped out of school at the University of San Francisco in her senior year rather than finishing her degree in communications. School wasn't for me, she says. She felt proud for getting the family farm in order, but for the first two months of the conflict her family didn't know where she was, most forms of communication in and around the country had been destroyed. I experienced war like a movie, Menelik says. No communication, no internet, nothing. These days Menelik splits her time between navigating conversations with governmental officials, wherein she shares her experience of the war, and more restful activities, like working on the family farm and teaching English classes at the local school in the town of Moni. The family grows aloe vera on a massive scale. The farm is the size of about 50 football fields, for use in cosmetics products. The second location of Melanick's family business, Little Moya in Moni, a town in Ethiopia. The second location of Melanick's family business, Little Moya in Moni, a town in Ethiopia. Mele Menelik It was during the early days of the war that Menelik's sister started an Instagram page called Peace in Tigray, which now counts more than 16,000 followers, and a non-profit called Free Tigray. Menelik encourages Bay Area restaurants to funnel funds toward Free Tigray or directly to family members and personal connections they may have abroad since the country's failing infrastructure can make it difficult to get help to those on the ground. Our banks have been closed since November 2020. Our phone lines have been down since November 2020. Our internet has been down. We can't get medicine in, Menelik says. We're trying to provide for those needs. She says she feels discouraged by how little attention the war in Ethiopia tends to receive in some news sources. While Bay Area businesses from bakeries to rideshare tycoons have set up ways to support those impacted by the Russian war in Ukraine, Menelik feels it's much harder to raise awareness about the Tigrayan genocide. There's been no real groundswell of interest and concern, in her opinion. People have really galvanized about other similar events, but not for us, Menelik says. It's demoralizing. 
World Bank grants Ethiopia $300 million for Tigray war recovery. The money given under the International Development Association IDA, is part of the bank's Ethiopia project known as the Response Recovery Resilience for Conflict Communities. It will partly go to reconstructing local facilities such as health centers and other amenities but will also help locals get assistance for effects of war, such as sexual violations and gender-based violence GBV. The bank said, Ethiopia on Wednesday received a massive boost to rebuild from the Tigray War after the World Bank agreed to disperse $300 million targeted at local communities whose lives have been destroyed. The money given under the International Development Association IDA, is part of the bank's Ethiopia project known as the Response Recovery Resilience for Conflict Communities. It will partly go to reconstructing local facilities such as health centers and other amenities but will also help locals get assistance for effects of war, such as sexual violations and gender-based violence GBV, the bank said. Read, Ethiopia, writes watchdogs name perpetrators of Tigray atrocities The decision by the bank may have come as a surprise as Ethiopia is battling accusations of atrocities by its own military in the war, claims it has dismissed. Last week, the UN approved a budget for an independent investigation by a specially assigned panel of three experts to look into the atrocities after rights watchdogs unearthed evidence of mass graves and interviewed people who claimed they had been tortured, improving services by this week. There were still accusations of restricting aid into Tigray, three weeks after Ethiopia formally granted humanitarian corridors. Read, HRW asks Ethiopia to probe Tigray war crime. The World Bank grant will go into renovating damaged social facilities like schools and hospitals as well as helping people begin a new life from the war. To urgently meet the needs of conflict-affected communities, mobile units will be dispatched to provide key services including in the areas of education, health, water, and sanitation, a dispatch said. The project will begin with areas in Afar, Amhara, Banishangal Gumas, Haromia and Tigray regions, which have been highly impacted by the recent conflict and host large numbers of internally displaced peoples IDPs. The bank said, read, Ethiopia in image crisis over Tigray atrocities, this project will help to improve access to health, psychosocial support and legal services for GBV survivors in conflict-affected regions where quality response services are limited. Usman Dioni, World Bank Country Director for Eritrea, Ethiopia, South Sudan and Sudan said on Wednesday. Part of the money will also support long-term investments in institutions, communities and policies for the conflict-afflicted communities. T-Tube has a doubt on how it is going to be implemented.